Hello there, it's me, Sari here again, and today I'm here with a scrap haul from with stuff from Scrapbruket. I think it might be my final scrap haul video actually I'm making this year. So let me just go, go all, through all of these and then I'm hoping I'll be able to play around with some of these things in the end of the video. So let's see if I can get myself started. I got myself these creative corners from the Misty most incredible stamp tool invented and then of course there are lots of copies for this um, stamping tool but i was thinking that if i would like to put my paper a little a little bit inside into let's say inside in the center of the misty these corners are helpful because then i can put my paper up like so and then i can do my stamping and then i can move things around in a different way so i'm hoping i'll be able to use these in a future video perhaps you never know and the thing that I'm going to start working in now is a creative journal from Dilutions. And the thing is that the pages are blank, so all I have to do, of course, is try my best to be creative and experiment with different methods in, in this one. So I think I'll just start working in this one today. And then I, I'm ex actually... I've got myself two new products from Nuvo. This is a some sort of a glimmer paste and this one also but these don't seem to sparkle as much and uh, let's see if there's any kind of a difference or if this one actually well there is a bit of glimmer to it but it isn't that visible since it is so dark from the get-go so let's see if I can make it work I'm not sure how to use these even, but still I'm going to try them out and then I got wild and crazy when it came to these Nuvo mousses, embellishment mousses, because I saw a video on YouTube where somebody used these through a stencil with a palette knife. And I was thinking, I ought to be able to do that as well, so why not? So that's what I'm going to attempt today, hopefully, if I don't forget about myself. And I do have a plastic palette knife here that I'm going to work with. And these are the colours that I sort of fan to tickled my fancy when I placed my order. And as you can see, I've also got some foil from Crafter's Companion here. It's a two metre roll package. And I saw another video where they used glue and a sponge and a stencil or two and foil in order to create that sort of sticky embossing powder function with the glue and I was really intrigued to try that out so I'm, I'm thinking I'll be placing these here and I didn't didn't know how to limit myself so I just felt, felt like going wild and crazy just in case I were to be smitten by this method so let's see if I can put them here and then I've got myself some stamps and even a, some sort of a glitter accent from Nuvo. Some sort of a glitter glue. Some sort of perhaps similar to stickles or something. I'm, I'll, I'll try this one up also, I hope. And here is something. It's a crackle glaze. It's not a crackle paint. It's a crackle glaze. So I'm thinking it will crackle by itself afterwards when I have put it on something. It's water-based and it is fast drying and it's going to create an eggshell cracking pattern as it air dries. So I really need to leave this be, I suppose. So I'm not, not going to be able to show it to you in this video. I got myself some stamps from Studio Light and it's a company that I'm sort of coming to love more and more when it comes to things that I see in their range. So Studio Light, and this one is called Stamp SL175, if you are interested in having a sort of a Christmassy uh, splatter stamp set. And I do have more stamps, so I could start with these. Lavinia stamps, it's a wonderful row of Christmas trees there. Fir trees, I think it's fir. I'm, I'm mixing all the trees together now. And these three really got me going when I saw this beautiful stamp set from Bow Bunny, which is called Circular Textures Stamp. And I like these as well, but these one, the, these are the ones that I really want to have a go at. And then I saw this set of Winter Classics 
It's a clear stamp set from Janine's Art. It's from the, the Netherlands. And here you can see it better perhaps. All the beautiful stamps. Just look at that cabin there with those trees in the background. And there's a snowman and an igloo there. And I'm hoping I'll be having some fun with these. Let's see. And then I saw these beautiful words. And I didn't really know how big they were. And I was surprised to find out that these are really big. So I'm thinking these could be either in the focal point perhaps. Or perhaps in the background studio light yet once more. And it's called Stamp MM219. So let's see if I can make it work with these. And you know what I realize now? I haven't got any clear blocks here, so I need to go and get those. Unless I make it work with the ones that I've got here. I do have a couple of butterflies on them, but I'm sure I'll be able to move them momentarily somewhere else. I had a class, a mixed media class, yes you see, so that's why stamps are still there. Moving back to the thing that I'm talking about right now. This is a stencil, a small stencil. I was thinking this was, this, this was going to be as big as the regular ones, but it wasn't. I'm sure it did say the proper size and everything, but I just didn't read properly. This one says stars. And here is some sort of a snowfall, and this one was really what set me going when I wanted to go for something. So it's a 15, 15 times 15 centimeters from Dutch Dubadu. And it's called Snow. I do have another couple here from Dutch Dubadu, and this one is called Triangles, and I do like the unevenness in the pattern. Here is something called Patch. And here is something that's called arrows, art arrows. Okay, so there are arrows there. And then there's some sort of a dots. This is quite a stencil. So let's see. My first thought was to actually create a background with Distress Oxide inks. So I'm just going to move things around here just to sort of avoid them getting dirty it up let's say so the thing about distress oxide inks of course is that you can layer lighter shades upon a bit darker shade so that could be something I could give a go so let's say I would start off with broken china I'm just going to put it here and I'm going to spray some water on top of it and I'm using a Distress Sprayer bottle here from Tim Holtzen, Sizzix and all different kinds of companies. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to dilute it like this. And I'm not, then I'm going to try to put my book here, the first page. And I'm just going to sort of run it through in order to create some sort of a background colour. And it seems like I won't be getting any darker than this. So what I have to do is dry it and go back in and sort of hope for a second layer on top of that layer. So this is going to be a trial and error and um, I can see that the book is starting to break up as I speak so I might have to enforce it later with some washi tape perhaps and things like that. So I'm thinking that this book could be something that I'm having myself lots of fun with. I'm also I also realise that it won't be as easy as I imagine working in this book because of this book. Usually I like to work with singular pieces of paper, sheets of paper. I don't like them being bound in a book like this, but I thought I'd just challenge myself just to see how far I can go with this. And perhaps I'll even start a series of this. You never know. So as you see, the paper is starting to warp because First off it got wet and then it's getting hot from the embossing tools or the heat gun's heat. So let's see, I'm going to press it there and lift it up and I'm just going to dry it as it is, building up the layers as you see. Waste not, want not. So I'm going to take care of all of the ink that I can get and then I'm going to continue with another layer of ink, perhaps through a stencil or so. And then of course I need a 
couple of brushes. I need to go get them. I wish I had a handyman here, so because <laughs> for whom I could tell to something. Right, go fetch that. Go fetch that. But I just have to go and get myself. So, now you can see that there are a couple of layers. It has started building up the layers. So let's see if I can get a really nice th thickness in the corner there. Coverage, I meant not thickness. So let's see if I can pick up some more. It seems like I'm not going to get any darker. So I'm just going to t twist the book the next time I'm going to pick up the color. I sort of fancy having the difference in the colors here. I don't want everything to be equally blue. But I do like the difference in color. I'm going to make a last sort of print with the ink here. I'm just just going to get my brushes and baby wipes. There's always something, isn't there? So let's see if I can fit them in here. And I do want to wipe it clean before I do anything else. So the surface that I'm working on is a baking board, but I actually chose to use it for my crafty projects. Like so. And I'm thinking that it might be nice to have perhaps another blue colour. So I'm thinking perhaps Salty Ocean could be something that I could have some fun with. And perhaps I'll even Tail that one that way and I'm going to spray on some more water and I think I'll just dip the book in there and lift it up just to see what's going to happen. I think I'll just, ouch, it gets really hot I must say. So let's see if I can succeed a little bit better if I'm just going to put the paper there and sort of press it. What I could do is I could just take the leftover ink here onto a piece of card. Perhaps I can make a card out of this later. 
I could put it aside and I could just wipe off the excess here. So now I would like to get this one dry. Now it's fairly dry, but it's also fairly hot. But it's wet on the side there, so I need to dry it off a little bit better. So if I'm going to press it like this, I mean it's not going to be, it's going to be warped for sure. And every time paper gets in contact with water, it gets it gets warped. So I suppose if I really would like to get this one flat, I would iron it or something. Well, I just have to give it my best. So let's see, it's it has got a blue background. I'm just going to see if I could do. Pretend that this is a sort of a sky background and I'm going to take, let's say, a silvery mousse, just to see. And, you know, it's a, well, there is something here that I'm th hoping will keep this one a bit moist because this foil is going to rip, rip for sure, you see. I'm not going to be able to keep it complete whole as I would have wanted to. So I hope that sort of cover is going to help me out. And I'm taking it now and it's sort of, it isn't creamy and juicy. It's a sort of a thick texture to it. So I'm hoping I'll be able to work it in. You know what I think I need. A spatula or something out of metal. This one feels too flimsy. I mean, the paste is just too thick, I think. But it goes on smooth enough. So one could imagine this being snowfall or something. Can you see it? And I do believe that I could. that I could heat set it and I could also try to put this one on top of this one actually. The size isn't perfect although I could try to make it work. Just use the excess, get rid of it on this piece of card so perhaps I can make two projects in one here. I'm a bit afraid that the spatula is going to break in half or something because so this is what I got here, and this is, I'm, going to, I'm going to leave it for, for self drying there. I think I had some more paper somewhere. I was thinking I could get use, make use of those as well. I do have a card base here, so let's say if I could do something with it without losing its grip and I'm thinking I'll start from the top. Let's see if I can make anything sensible out of this. And I don't really dare to leave these dirty because I'm, I don't want to clog this one up since the holes are so small. Oh, look at that. A really snowy effect there. And now I'm going to need something to clean up these things in. I didn't plan ahead, so of course I could have had a jar with water, but it's fairly easy to clean it up with a baby wipe, I must say. So here we are with that. And I'm going to wipe this one clean as well, just to be on the safe side. So, as I said, I'm hoping this won't dry too quickly. 
perhaps I ought to spray some water in it as as I know right now. I'm going to move over to this one in case I were to continue working with these pastes. And um, I'm going to dry it just to see what happens. Oh, you know what I forgot about? I was supposed to use a stencil on this one first, but well, let's see. I think I'll just make another kind of background, background and just get this one started. An easy piece of page in the front. One could continue on this later on, of course. I might even go on with the stamps, you never know. But for now, I think I'll just leave it as it is. Move it to the side and I'm hoping, I'm, I'm thinking of actually just using one page at a time because then I'm able to do some stamping without having the texture from the back page interfering with that. So, let's see. There are many ways of colouring a page. I mean, you could do as I did here with some ink that is water reactive and just dip it in water and everything. You could also, if you wanted to, Perhaps you would like to use put a on a really soft, soft color at the bottom. Let's see what could happen if I do it like this. Now I've got an uneven background. Of course, I'm thinking I could have gone with the antique linen in order to not do a big thing of this one. I could, of course, take a brush here if I wanted to. But I'm just going to heat set it. So that's an easy and quick way actually of going about it when you want to cover a page or so. And then you're going to get maximum strength of that colour. And why I did spray it was because I wanted the colour to bleed a little. So that's what happens when you are adding on some water to these distress oxidings. The water sort of reacts to it, the water, water. I'm, I'm sorry, the ink reacts to the water and starts to bleed. So now I have this yellow page here and I'm thinking what colour could be nice to combine it with. Well, of course, if I could go for a stencil of sorts, and I, I, I have that one there. I'm thinking of that triangular shape. So I'm trying to get that one out. At the same time and So I have this one here, and you know what I just found out? That you could use a clip of sorts in order to keep your stencil in place. And the thing is that this one is a little bit bigger, or the stencil is smaller than the paper itself. So I'm just try trying to find a place where it could sit nicely. I'm just going to keep it there, just to see if it could work. I'm thinking I could have actually gone for another clip as well. Just to see. And I still have to keep this one in place, of course. So I'm thinking yellow, and why not pink? Why not pink indeed? And I'm thinking I'll just try to find a brush that has got a pink label on it. And let's see, I'm just going to start from here. And I'm just going to work randomly like this. Not try trying to create anything perfect, perfect. Just going to try these out. You know what, I'm going to leave the stencil in and I'm going to go ahead with some blue as well. So I'm thinking blue for feathers could be nice. And I'm going to keep it there and I'm just going to work in like this. And I might as well just blend these together with the previous colour. 
just to see what happens there like so so let's see that's what it looks like right now to keep them there so this is where we are right now if i would like to of course can of course go in and just do a little bit of spraying and have a piece of paper ready so i can do a sort of a bleach effect Diane Rivale calls it ghosting and sometimes you luck out and you can't just get those droplets sometimes you get a fine mist and sometimes well it is what it is sometimes I'm just going to put it there and lift it up and you can see that I've got an, a bit of color there and we can see it definitely on the blue that it has got some shifting to it and of course the longer you are going to keep the water here the more it's going to bleach so perhaps I ought to wait a little and of course when I have a sort of a soft yellow pale background it's not going to be that visible as it is going to be on the blue so now I'm actually happy with that it gives it a little bit more depth and before I go on I think I'll just dry it up a little and perhaps I could go in with some black you know what I think I'll just think about what colour to do my stamping with and I'm thinking that I'll actually put these three circular things as a sort of a series of a stamp and I'm going to stamp them all at once and in order not to go to the black colour too soon because I'm really fond of stamping in black you see I think I'll just challenge myself and stamp with another colour and I'm thinking I'll succeed with a smaller ink block here and I'm thinking of placing these irregularly like this maybe kind of a third one that something like that so what could be nice to have I mean I'm thinking green could be nice of course and blue I mean I actually think I'm going to go with the salty did I go with salty ocean just now so I'm going to go for a bit darker blue faded jeans just to see what will happen if I'm going to keep it in this sort of same color scheme and not wander too much so there I have those three and of course when you are working with a clear stamp the image won't be perfect when you are working with distress inks it's just a fact I mean I could of course prep this either just by rubbing with a sort of a eraser or let an archival an archival archival ink sit on the top and then do the stamping later but I have those there so actually I think I'm going to put them back so I know where they are I'm not too fond of the packaging or the safekeeping of these it's a they don't stick too well to this I must say I think I'm going to settle for those now and I did have some beautiful splotches and things so I'm thinking of just trying to see what will happen and this is also sort of a flimsy thing well this one actually sticks to it better so I'm actually going to go for some green some sort of a green color and uh, I think I'll go for cracked pistachio because I, I do like that color and I'm going to put it there just to see what happens and it's going to be a subtle effect of course and in this way I can actually start building layers and let's see if I can manage stamping there So now I've got some small spots here and there. I'm going to leave these others for later. 
Then I have the Christmas trees down here. Should I try to make something out of it on the first page? Let's see. It's a set of Lavinia. It's a Lavinia stamp. It doesn't happen. Bloody hell! It just broke. I mean, for goodness sake, I'm, this is a proper time to say bloody hell, I must say. Let's see if I can make it work anyhow. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that one, was I? Right. And let's see. If I could stamp it in green, Lucky Clover, just to see what would happen. Although I would prefer to stamp in black, actually. And then, of course, I'm thinking, in this case, since I have a solid stamp, and I do know that I have this baking board, which is going to give me a hard time, so I'm sorry to say, I have to move this one down. But I'm trying to create... You see, it's not going to work. I'm going to give it a go, yet once more, just to see if I can place it on top. It's a bit better. I'm thinking I'll try to, try to create a border with these Christmas trees at the bottom. Just going to give it a go, like so. I'm going to give it a press and I'm even going to move it down here. Well, that one actually turned out better just because it doesn't have this binding there. So I'm going to need to do a little bit of cleaning of the stamp, a little bit of click, click like that. And then of course, let's see, that's where it broke. Hmm. I must say, I wasn't expecting that. But, just have to bear that in mind, to be careful with these stamps. It's a shame though, because these are expensive. I mean, they are more expensive than the regular clear stamps. So, I have that one there. And I don't have anything here that I fancy using, so I'm just going to move that one there. So now I'm here, so let's see if I could go for another stencil here. Because I was thinking that I would like to move in with a sort of a texture. With a pattern of sorts, and I'm thinking that this small thing here could be nice. And you know what? I'm going to save this one for later, but on the other hand... I'll give this one a go. It won't be perfect, it won't. And now I have to think about what colour to use. And in this case, I can actually put it in the side there, because it has got this beautiful shape. So it's easy for me to just work with it as it is. So I was going to clip it there on both sides and I'm thinking I'll just try to make it straight to there. So if I'm going to put in, what colour could I go with? I don't want to break things off too much, so I'm thinking I'll try to make it work with this iced spruce just to see where I'll end up. I do have a greyish sort of thing here. Let's see if I can make it work here. So I'll just continue to have something in the background. Since these squares are just a little bit too big in my book to do anything else with, I'm just going to put them here just to see what happens. So now they're there and they are not taking over the page as you can see. So that one goes there and now I think it's time to do the thing that I'm really eager to do. I'm going to need a piece of paper or something to 
pick up something from. Do I have a plastic that I could use? I have this. So I think I'll just put some glue here. Um, and in this case, it's just a Tombow Mono Mono Liquid Mono Multi Liquid Glue, and I'm just score, just putting it there. And what I saw in a video was that one could try to add the glue through a stencil like this, and let's see if I can make it work. And this is my first time using foil, mind you, so I'm just going to put it there. And one is supposed to rub it like this until it's going to release itself from the background. So instead of using sticky embossing powder, which you could stamp with it with and everything, this could be a way to go about it. Oh, it works! This is what what has been taken away from this one, and now I have this beautiful golden shimmer. Oh, lovely! So I'm going to go for another try here, and I'm thinking I'll just have it in two places. Really, I'm not going to go overboard. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. So this is a nice way to actually hide things with. So if you are unhappy with your stamping or something, you could actually go in with this foil and just save the day. So let's see. Ta da! And if it hasn't taken everything, you could go back in, lift up some more, and perhaps it will work even here now. So this is a nice technique, I must say. I fell in love with it when I saw it. And after that, after that I've, been, I've been waiting to get my hands on this sticky embossing powder, but now I have this. But I must, I must, I must, I must clean this one up because it has got, got some glue on it and I don't want that one to be gluey. So this one needs to take time for. And I'm going to put that one there, put that one there. You know, it's the space, it's always a question of space, isn't it? So just try to wipe it clean so you can go on using it later on, like so. Here we are with that one, and I think I'll perhaps I ought to just dry it just for see keeps uh, for safety's sake. I have it here, and now I'm thinking of perhaps putting a some sort of a quote stamp that I have here, and I also like to keep this pages somewhat clean and simple they don't have to be over cluttered with things but since I have this here I'm thinking I might actually give it a go and I'm going to use my big block here and I really need to take care of how I'm going to do the stamping of course since this is not flat so I'm not sure if I'll be able to succeed with this, and it's not going to be easy to re-stamp a text stamp now, is it? So either you should do it sloppily from the get-go, or really pay attention and have the best, everything at, it, at its best, so to speak. So now I'm just going to put it there. I'm placing it in the centre, but I'm going to keep it here while I'm stamping. And I'm CPRing it.
Do I dare to lift it? I'm not sure. You see, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So let's see if I could try to place it back in its place. Well, it doesn't get any better, but this is going to be a reminder for me that it's, I'm not going to succeed at all times now, am I? I just don't get it. Why? It's so difficult to get it there. Well, I just have to settle for it, don't I? So this is it. Two pages into the book. I might continue with some snowflakes and such. But still, it's nice to have started playing around with different techniques. So I'm hoping I'll be able to come back to this book and um, see what I can come up with. I'm going to sign off right now and I hope to come back soon. You never know when, but anyhow, bye bye.